Welcome, welcome, welcome tonight, everybody that's going to be coming on and joining me. Praise God. God bless you all as you're coming on tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome, everybody that's coming on. Please share this if you're coming on already. God bless you. We love you and thank God that you're joining us tonight. We're going to have a great session tonight together. Praise God. Enjoy this song. I won't go back as we're coming on tonight. I'm tr God bless you, Amy and Sean. Great to see you on tonight. Diane, God bless you. Enjoy this song. But please share it as you're coming on tonight. God bless you, everybody, as you're joining us. Who else is coming on tonight? I can't see everybody because the way the screen is tonight, but I hope you're having a great night. Carol Ann, God bless you as you're coming on. I hope you can hear this song. There we go. I, now I got it up on the screen. I can see who's coming on. Praise God. God bless you all as you're coming on tonight. Fabian, great to see you on tonight too. Yes. Come on. There's Ginny. Hello, Hello Ginny. God bless you. I miss some of you coming on because mine's a little slower. Please enjoy this song. We're not going back. Praise God. God bless you, Patrick, as you're coming on. I'm watching you on my other computer here tonight, everyone. Praise God. Peggy Sue, great to see you coming on tonight. Please share it, everyone. Let's get this out. Some folks have asked me some good questions about the time frame that we're in, and I want to try to answer those tonight. Thank you, Jesus. How many know Jesus is Lord? Sandra, God bless you for coming on tonight and joining us. Yes. Oh, Kim, God bless you and Judy as you're coming on. I'm looking at my computer, folks, at the same time. Enjoy this song. I've been changed. I'm not going back the way I was. I'm not turning from Jesus. Not in this hour. As I watch you all coming on tonight. Let me bring this over here so I can kind of look at this camera at the same time. Yes. How many of you won't go back to the way it used to be? Pastor John, God bless you. We love you. Thank God for your stand, sir. Michelle, great to see you on tonight. God bless you, kingdom family, as you're coming on. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Amen. There's Tom. God bless you, Thomas, as you're coming on tonight. Edith, God bless you as you're coming on tonight. It's been a while since I've been on, but I'm so glad I'm coming on tonight to teach from the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation. Come on, I won't go back. Pastor Ellen, God bless you. Diane, great to see you. Great to see the Kingdom family coming on tonight. Let's see how many we can get on tonight. Can you please share this right away? Invite your friends. Yes, Kim. You're not going back. Rona, great to see you on tonight, Rona. God bless you. Amy's not going back either. God bless you, William. Praise God. I think that's Claver coming on tonight. And Terry, great to see you on. Happy birthday, belated birthday, Terry. I heard it was your birthday. Carol, praise God. I see only one share right now. Please, all you got to do is press share. We can get the gospel out tonight. We can get this out so that people can see what's really going on in the world. 
There's Renee coming on and Pat. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Elaine says she's not going back. Diane says she's not going back. Not me either. There's Bill. God bless you, Bill. Pastor Ralph, the man of God on tonight. We're bleeding for a great time too, Pastor Ralph. Get your Bibles, folks. We're going to read the scriptures tonight. There's Oris on. All right. Let's get ready to fire it up tonight. Let's get ready to, to uh, go into the words. And I get your Bibles out, everybody. Let's go to the book of uh, Daniel tonight and the book of Revelation. We're going to start in the book of Revelation tonight. Revelation chapter 6. And as you're getting your uh, Bibles out, we welcome you tonight. And we're so honored that you've joined us as we continue to stand together and proclaim the Word of God and, and to tell people the hour in which we live and to warn people of what is coming. There's a whole lot happening in the world. Things are moving very, very quickly right now. How many know that? Things are moving very, very, very quickly. It's, it's incredible how fast things are moving. And I've got a whole lot to share with you tonight, and hopefully we can get it done in an hour or just under an hour tonight. But uh, it's amazing. I really believe we're living in the last days, and I know many of you do also. And we've got to get the gospel out. It's amazing how many people we've seen come to Christ in the last uh, couple of weeks. I think uh, Pastor Ellen today led somebody to the Lord on, the, I was told, over the phone today as they called in for what I'm about to show you right now. They called in for a, a, a letter of exemption, one of our religious exemption letters. And God bless Pastor Ellen. She was sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And she led that precious woman to the Lord because people are in desperate times. They're really worried about their future. They're really concerned of what's going on. And it's not just Christians. It's it's people who don't even believe in Christ yet. They, they're they concerned of what's going on. And so uh, we have to work together, dear saints of God, and help each other win people to Christ and get the message of the coming of the Lord, which is very soon uh, in this hour. And I, you can help me do that by just sharing it right now. It doesn't cost you anything. All you got to do is press share. Uh, I do want to tell you about this, uh, this uh, letter here. It's our religious exemption letter. It has worked. Uh, we've been handing out a, a ton of these already. People are calling uh, and we're giving them out to uh, family and friends. Uh, and if you would like one of these religious exemption letters, we'd like to provide it to you. Now, here's the deal though. Um, I want to encourage you, if you go, if you have a home church, if you're watching me live, or if you're going to watch this as recorded afterwards, if you have a home church, I encourage you to go to your pastor and ask them for a religious exemption letter from your church. Uh, and I want to encourage, let's put some pressure on some of these pastors too, family. If your pastor, if the church is not open, call your pastor. Tell them to open the church. Uh, if you need a religious exemption letter, go to your pastor. Let's get these pastors engaged in this hour and get them activated to stand against the tyranny that's going on. The violation of charter of rights and freedoms, the violation of religious freedom, the violations of just people's basic rights to the necessities of life concerning a, a job, concerning employment and be able to sustain their families. Uh, families, let's get this message out to pastors. So I encourage you first, call your pastor and ask them for a religious exemption letter. Uh, we'd be glad to help that pastor write the letter because uh, this is something that I put together uh, for our ministry and other ministries have asked for it. We've given it to them and they're using it now. Uh, and uh, if you don't, but if you don't have a home church either, if you don't have a pastor right now or your church is not open or you don't have a place to worship, then I encourage you to come and join us. And Pastor, uh, John, uh, pastor Ward is on tonight and I encourage you to, uh, uh, go to Pastor Ward's church, mighty man of God, and uh, standing up uh, for truth and for justice and for freedom and preaching the gospel and preaching faith into people's lives. But if you don't have a home church, I encourage you to come down to Hamilton and join us here at 1411 Upper Wellington Street. Again, that's 1411 Upper Wellington Street. People come all the way from Scarborough, from, from London, Ontario, from Niagara Falls. And as Pastor Ralph has said, 
Uh, concerning Kingdom Worship Center, the difference makes up for the distance. And I'll tell you, I would travel a long way to be around good leadership and to be around a church uh, body that is believing God and standing by faith and pushing back on darkness. And again, I, I can't stress enough, Pastor John Ward uh, right there is uh, doing it also. And if you want information about Pastor Ward's church in the Toronto area, I'd be glad to give it to you. I, I trust that man of God. Amen. Now, uh, again, if, but if you want one of these, please contact our church office uh, and we'll be glad to get it to you. Uh, and, uh, and, and all of our, you can go to our website, uh, www.kwc.church. It's also up on, I, I did put a, uh, information about that up on the screen already earlier. Well, let's get into our uh, uh, Bible tonight. Let's go to Revelation chapter 6. One of the questions people have asked me, and I'm going to deal with some of the COVID stuff tonight too in the context of scriptures, but one of the things that people have asked me, they said, Pastor, is the vaccine the mark of the beast? And some people are concerned that if they've taken the vaccine, that they've now taken the mark of the beast, and they're no longer able to go into heaven. Now, I'm going to clarify that tonight through the scriptures so that you would understand where we're at in Bible prophecy and, uh, and the fact that if you've taken the vaccine, you, you haven't taken the mark of the beast. Now, I do believe this right off the get-go, and I've been teaching this at our church, that I don't believe the actual vaccine's the mark of the beast, but I believe it's the platform or it's the means or the median by which they can launch the mark of the beast or the Antichrist can use it. We're seeing tyrannical ways across the nations of the world like we've never seen before. For example, in Nigeria right now, uh, the Nigerian government has told the people they have two weeks. Uh, two weeks from now, they will not be allowed to go to church, and that includes a mosque, although the, the, the uh, Muslims in the northern part of Nigeria are very radicalized, and so they're not going to not gather. And so you know who's going to be the target, but Christians in Nigeria but in two weeks, Christians will not be allowed to go to church unless they've been vaccinated. They also said, same as in Canada, if you're not vaccinated, you can't go to sporting events, you can't go to uh, public events uh, and public gatherings in Nigeria. And now listen to this one. In Nigeria, you're not going to be able to even go into a bank unless you're vaccinated. In Australia, they're having extreme lockdowns. Uh, one of the ministers has carried it even further by saying that if you're unvaccinated, you will be locked out of the Australian economy. And so that means that you will not be able to work, you won't be able to go to a bank, and you will not most likely be able to go to a grocery store and get the basic necessities of life. We've been trying to warn people about this for 18 months. Some folks laughed at us. Some folks thought we were crazy and lost our mind. Uh, some folks thought that uh, we didn't know what we were talking about, and that simply was a virus that uh, the governments were trying to get a hold of. I knew from the Holy Spirit, and many of you did also, that this was not that. This was exactly what's happening now. Lockdowns, shutdowns, tyranny, uh, vaccine passports, eventually giving you no access, complete control. We've been prophesying about this. And I'll tell you, we've been on point, not because of us, but because of the precious Holy Spirit who helps us see these things before they happen. And so you can see that these tyrannical ways are happening in the world right now. And we are, and without a doubt, COVID-19 is a virus. It's like the flu virus, a bad strain of the flu virus. Uh, but they're using this now, some of them in ignorance, some of them with understanding, uh, to lock down the world, take freedom away from everybody, and eventually uh, get a identification system in place. That's really what all this is about, folks, is to get the digital ID identification system in place to control the people of this world. It is completely obvious. If you can't see that right now, if you're watching this video, you may say, ah, that's crazy. If you can't see that, I pray your eyes to be opened up quickly and you do some really good research. But the question again, I'm going to answer tonight, bringing some of the other stuff in, is the vaccine itself, the shot, the jab, uh, the mark of the beast. Again, no, I believe it's the platform that will help launch it. Now, I do want to say, vaccinated or unvaccinated, you're welcome at Kingdom Worship Center. Uh, we will not discriminate and understand and, and, and check things out. I'm not a big proponent of it, as you know. Some folks have taken it, uh, and uh, and they have uh, and they've taken it for whatever reason. But regardless, we love you, 
Let people make their own personal choices concerning this, and we shouldn't condemn or judge anybody as believers. Uh, we love everybody, we support everybody, and people need Christ, vaccinated or unvaccinated. You are welcome at Kingdom Worship Center. I know there's some churches right now forcing their leadership, their pastors, forcing their, their staff to get vaccinated or they'll be terminated. Uh, somebody just told me uh, not too long ago that they went to go to church and when they went through the front doors, they were asked by the pastor and the pastoral team if they were vaccinated and they said no and they were told to leave and they could not come back until they were vaccinated. It is a shame, a shame on the gospel and a shame to these pastors and to these churches to reject people from coming into the house of God because they made a personal health choice not to be vaccinated because of whatever concerns. Maybe it's because they, they can't take it because of health reasons. Maybe their conscience won't let them. Maybe they have actual concerns about people dying from them and people getting sick from them. Maybe they have concerns that the facts that people are still catching COVID-19 even though they're vaccinated. Do you know that 35% of current deaths in Canada by COVID-19, 35% of those deaths are from fully vaccinated people. That was in the newspaper uh, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, and that number keeps climbing. So for pastors to reject people from coming into church because they're not fully vaccinated is, is really horrible. And uh, maybe they could be just giving power to the beast and they don't even know it uh, itself. Because again, this, I believe, is a platform by which they can lock global takeover and global control and we're seeing it we're seeing it in nigeria we're seeing it, in, it we're seeing it in israel we're seeing it in australia we're starting to see it even more and more here in canada and i just wish and pray our pastors would wake up and we pray for them now one of the keys to understand the fact that i don't believe the vaccine itself is the mark of the beast is because the mark of the beast cannot be launched until the antichrist shows up now, let me just give you a few scriptures. This is how the Antichrist comes on the scene. Number one is God allows him to come on the scene because God has an end time plan for this world. God is going to judge this world. The seven year tribulation that's coming to the world, according to the book of Daniel and according to the book of Revelation, that seven year period that's going to happen where Antichrist is going to be uh, ruling on the earth with this global government, according to Revelation chapter 13 and, and Daniel chapter 9 and other, por, uh, other scriptures, Daniel 7, uh, this, this Antichrist that's going to rule the world has to come on the scene first before the mark of the beast. And he doesn't come on the scene until we see in Revelation chapter 6, the Bible says in verse 1, And I saw when the Lamb opened out, out one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. So now John is going to get to see what, what the future of the earth is and what the pl end time plan of God is. Of course, Jesus is in control because Revelation chapter 5 talks about a scroll with seven seals on it. And there was, a, there was sadness in heaven because there was no one, no, they felt that there was none worthy to open that those seals and ultimately open the scroll, which is the prophetic word of God concerning the future of the earth. But there was one worthy. It was the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. And he steps forward. And, and now we're in Revelation 6 where he opens the first seal. And then he said, And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown and was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. This we believe is the Antichrist. White horse. The whole, is deception, comes across as being pure and righteous and honest and integrous and true, but he's not. He's deceived. He comes, he's going to deceive the world. And, uh, and so, so the Antichrist has to come on the scene the moment Jesus opens up the first seal. That's an important thought. The Antichrist, the tribulation be period begins when the Antichrist uh, signs a, 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 an agreement with the nation of Israel. And if you have your Bible, you can go to Daniel chapter 9, and I'm going to read verse, verse uh, 27. And the Bible says this, Daniel chapter 9, if, if, verse 27. I'll wait till you turn there. So again, we're asked, saying, is the vaccine itself the mark of the beast? No, it is, I believe, the platform by which the mark will be launched. 
And I'm going to show you that tonight in many cases on, on, on what's happening globally. Uh, but, but because the mark of the beast cannot be instituted until the tribulation period begins and until the Antichrist comes on the scene. Jesus has to open that first seal for him to come. And then this Antichrist is going to be empowered by the devil, by the dragon, Revelation chapter 13. So you have to know, pastors, let me tell you again, do not support this global government. Why? Because you will be supporting a, a Luciferian spirit because it's controlled by what the Bible says. The Bible says this end time gov global government will be controlled by the dragon, which is Satan himself. And so we're not promoting their ways. Uh, we're standing fast in the per word of God by faith on the word of God and in the will of God and warning the world and helping God's people stay strong. Now, Daniel chapter 9, verse 27 says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That one week is seven years. We know that because Daniel had a vision of 70 weeks. The first 69 weeks, we know the, the, the total years that it took to fulfill the 69 weeks. So we know that Daniel, uh, da Daniel's one week means seven years. We know that 69 weeks was seven times 69 and we know how many years by history. So we know that each week represents one year, uh, seven year period. And he shall confirm the covenant, I'll say it, for seven years. And in the midst of the week, three and a half years into it, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, which Israel is going to rebuild the temple. We know that. And, it, and they're planning to do that right now, rebuild the temple. And he's going to allow the Jewish people to worship in that temple. And the Bible says, and sacrifice and oblation to see. But in the middle of it, he's going to turn on the nation of Israel and turn on, 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 on the Jewish people. And the Bible says, and for the overspreading of the abomination, he shall make it desolate. He's going to set an image up of himself. He's going to corrupt the new Jewish temple. He's going to demand worship of himself, of the image, Revelation chapter 13. And in the middle of the tribulation period, he's going to wreak havoc on the earth. And that's when we begin to see, according to the book of Revelation, that the, that the judgment of God and the wrath of God is going to be poured out in the earth. The first, the seven year period of the tribulation, first three and a half years is tribulation. The last three and a half years is great tribulation because of the, what the Antichrist will be doing, but more importantly, the wrath of God on the earth. Now, the Bible says this, he shall make it desolate even until the uh, consummation and that's determined shall be poured upon the desolate. In the original language, it's really saying that the Antichrist is going to make desolate, but he that made it desolate shall be destroyed. And without a doubt, he's going to be destroyed, the Antichrist. He's going to be thrown in the lake of fire, body, soul, and spirit. As Elijah was taken up into heaven, body, soul, and spirit, and so was Enoch taken up into heaven, body, soul, and spirit. So the Antichrist and the false prophet uh, Revelation 13, the false prophet and the Antichrist, they will be thrown into the lake of fire, body, soul, and spirit. So, is the vaccine itself the mark of the beast? No. Is it the means for it to come? I believe so. So, if people have gotten vaccinated, they haven't taken the mark yet. And I want to encourage you, if you've taken the vaccine, do not, I repeat, do not take a mark on your right hand or your forehead, according to Revelation 13, which we'll share right now. Do not, let me repeat, do not take a mark. I'm really concerned. I've actually been praying because some of the pastors that are pushing people to take the vaccine and not allowing people to come to worship at the house of God, I, I, I'm sorry, that is, that is so unbiblical, so unscriptural, so not right in so many ways. Uh, so so Babylonian in mentality, uh, uh, so ungodly in so many ways. Everybody's welcome to the house of God. Jesus welcomed everybody into, into his teachings. He didn't have uh, the, the lepers arrested. He didn't ask for the lepers to pr provide some kind of proof or anything. He let them come hear the gospel. We let everybody come and hear the gospel. But I'm concerned by some of these pastors that if they're giving in to that now, will they lead people astray to say, oh, you can go ahead and take that mark because you've got to live. You've got to feed your family. You've got to, you, you've got to survive. You've got to keep your job. Well, I'll tell you what, the Bible is very clear. Those that take the mark of the beast 
will be lost in eternity forever in the lake of fire. And that is the word of God, dear family. Now, if you have your Bible, let's go to Revelation 13 again. So, we know that the mark of the beast cannot come until the Antichrist shows up. And he hasn't shown up yet. And the tribulation period hasn't started because we believe Daniel 9.27, he hasn't signed that agreement with the nation of Israel. And we believe that's what's going to start the great tribulation period when he signs an agreement with the nation of Israel. Now, Revelation chapter 13, we know that he must be on the scene, the Antichrist, in order for people to have taken the mark. Now, here we go. Uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. We'll talk about that in a second. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So this mark will either have will have the name of the beast, the name of the Antichrist, and the number of his name somewhere configured within it. So again, he's not on the scene yet. The tribulation period hasn't started. The mark of the beast is going to happen during the tribulation period. Most people believe, most eschatologists believe that the mark of the beast is going to happen somewhere near the middle of the of the tribulation period, although that is not absolutely 100%. And the reason why they believe that is because of verse 5 in Revelation 13, 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue for 42 months, which is three and a half years. Remember in the book of Daniel, in the middle of the tribulation period for 42 months, he's going to uh, bring an abomination to the temple of Israel, turn on the Jewish people, set up an image for him to be worshipped. And this is in that last 42 month period. So many believe that the mark of the beast is not going to come until the middle of the tribulation, although it doesn't conclusively say that. But we know one thing for sure. The mark can't happen until the tribulation period has started. And I believe the church won't be here. There's some people that believe the church will be here. I believe the church will be raptured. I believe the church will be out of here. I believe that can happen any time in an Im imminent return. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and the fact that God has not appointed us unto wrath, uh, and, and especially his wrath. But regardless, I always tell people it's all going to pan out in the end. Just be on fire for Jesus, committed to Christ, standing strong in your faith every day of your life. Because I do believe in an imminent return, but ultimately it all pans out in the end. Regardless, the mark of the beast cannot happen until the tribulation period begins and until the Antichrist, the global ruler, is appears. So, people that have taken the vaccine have not taken the mark. Some people say, well, there's a chip in it, Pastor. We don't know that conclusively, uh, that there's a chip in it. Some say there is. Some say there isn't. I'm not going to get into that debate. This this mark is not something that people are going to be deceived to take. They are going to be forced to take it. And like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were the people were forced to worship the image that Nebuchadnezzar set up. Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego made a decision of their own free will not to worship the, the, the image of Nebuchadnezzar. It'll be the same here. People will be forced into taking the mark of the beast. People will have to make their own decision concerning that. So nobody is going to be deceived into taking it. They're going to have to take it by their own free will. This is why you should give your life to Jesus Christ today. Jesus uh, is Lord and Savior of all humanity. And the only way to escape all of this is to give your life to Jesus Christ. Again, I believe in a pre-tribulation -trib, pre rapture. Give your life to Christ today. Stand strong in faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and upon the word of God. And you're going to need that even leading up to the tribulation because things are not going to get easier. Uh, uh, great tribulation, great trial, great sorrow is coming on this world. And the Bible has prophesied it and we're watching it unfold before our very eyes. 
But again, people are going to have to make a decision for this. They're going to be forced to do it, but nobody can force you against your free will. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you can say no. Uh, I believe again, uh, you won't be here if you're a believer in Christ. But we, so, so there you can see it. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 4. I hope I'm explaining this well tonight for you so that you can, you can hear and know and understand what's going on in this hour. Now, Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 talks about the, uh, uh, to, talks about the mark. And here's what happens to people that take the mark of the beast. Now, and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Hear what he says? If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead. I heard one pastor say, well, you can take the mark, but if you don't worship the beast, then you'll be okay. No, that's, that's not what it's saying in the original language. It's anybody that worships the beast, worships his image, or takes his mark. One of those three or all of those three. Uh, don't listen to these preachers, folks that preach, uh, you know, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want, want to sound like I'm against the grace message because I believe in the grace of God. We, we have been saved by grace through faith. Without the grace of God, none of us would be saved. But uh, grace doesn't give us a license to do what we want. And grace doesn't override the prophetic word of God when it comes to these, to the judgment of God. It overrides sin, death, hell, and the grave. But when God said to us, don't take the mark, don't worship the beast, don't worship the image, there's no return from that. There's nothing there that will help you return from that because the Bible tells us what happens to those people. Do you hear what I'm saying? The grace of God, through grace, we are saved. Through grace, we become born again. Through grace, we have eternal life. But God made it clear. This is what happens to people that receive the mark, worship the beast or his image. We can't change that. That's the word of God. And God's word is established in the heavens forever. Praise God. And I want to say this, faith cannot, we have faith, but we can, our faith cannot override God's will. We can't say, well, I know the Bible says that uh, the Antichrist is coming, but I believe he won't come. Well, no, no, no. The Bible says he is coming. And the word of God cannot be changed or altered. And God has exalted his word above his name. We can't override the, word, the will of God, the word of God, the, the plan of God, uh, the, 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 what God has declared right here in scriptures. Can I get an amen on that? Here's what happens. Anybody that worships the beast, worships his image or receives his mark, here's what it says. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. He And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and forever. That's the lake of fire he's talking about. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever, who, and whosoever, whosoever, doesn't matter, whosoever, whosoever, whoever takes it, whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. And so we can see here, do not take the mark of the beast. There, uh, it, it's, it's over for those who take it according to the word of God. Now again, the mark comes during the tribulation period the Antichrist is the one who forces people to do it, and he comes on the scene during the tribulation period, uh, and the tribulation period begins according to Daniel chapter 9, just a quick review, when he signs that peace treaty with the nation of Israel. So if you've taken the vaccine, you haven't taken the mark, but the vaccine is leading us to which I believe the, the, the launch of all of this in the future. Folks, the Bible is true. We are living in the last days. If you're watching me right now, this is not a fictional book. This is not a sci-fi story. This is not a, 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 a drama a, a club. This is not a theatrical a, a script for a play. This is the manifold wisdom of God. This is the truth. This word shall not fail. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away. But his word, his word shall be fulfilled. And it is eternal. 
it will never fail. So this word is true. If the Bible says there's coming a great tribulation on the earth, there is. If the Bible says that there's an antichrist coming, there is. If the Bible says that the mark of the beast is going to be forced on all human beings, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're in prison, whether you're out on the streets, whether you're male, whether you're female, makes no ma matter what nationality you are, it is going to happen. The Bible prophesied the coming of Jesus Christ. It happened. The Bible prophesied the cross that Jesus died on. It happened. The Bible prophesied and Jesus himself prophesied he would raise from the dead. It happened. And this will happen also. So again, if you've taken the vaccine, you have not taken the mark of the beast, but it will lead to that. Now, let me give you a few things and you can see what's really going on. It's crazy. One of the things you have to understand, and we have been teaching this, dear family and friends, for a long time now. We've been trying to tell, warn people of this. When I told people that constitutional rights were going to be trampled, the church is going to be targeted, uh, people are going to lose liberties and freedoms. And we started sharing that at the end of February in 2020 when this thing first broke. Now, one of the things you have to understand that they have been trying to launch, many of you do understand, is a digital ID, ID 2020. ID 2020 is a new, uh, a new uh, identification system, global identification system for all of the people of this world. It's attached to the 2021 agenda, as well as the 2030 agenda, and the Great Reset, as you know, which is basically the 2030 agenda. I read the book uh, COVID-19 and the Great Reset by by Schwab, and it's all there. They're trying to reset the world and take control of the world. Now, one of the ways they got to do that is through digital ID. Now, I've you can go there right now if you'd like. It's id2020.org. I'm on the I'm I'm on there right now. And I'm going to read you a few things from it uh, real quick. Okay, here it is. It says this. Uh, we need to get digital ID right. Identification is vital for political. Uh, identification is vital for political, economic, and social opportunities. But systems of identification that we have now are archaic. Licenses, passports, uh, uh, you know, health cards, all of this stuff. Uh, bank cards, all of these things are archaic. That's what basically they're saying. Insecure, meaning they're not secure. People can hack them. Lack of adequate privacy and protection. Uh, uh, keeps flipping on me. Privacy and protection. And for over a billion people inaccessible to identification right now. Digital identification uh, is being defined now and we need to get this right. That's what they're saying. We need to get this right. So you get these vaccine passports, folks, uh, are a part of this ID 2020, and they want to globalize this onto every human being. And I believe, I've said it from the beginning, this virus was released on purpose from a lab. I took some flack from people because they know it came from a market, from bats. I knew in my spirit it didn't. The Lord told me that. Many of you also knew it. Uh, I'm not the only one. There's many people that hear the voice of God. Thousands, I believe, upon thousands hear the voice of God in the world. But uh, but I said it came from a lab. On purpose, they released it. It didn't just creep out. It was released. And it's a shame that they've released this, I believe, in order to control the world. They, they don't care about life, folks. And they act like they're trying to save life. They don't care about life. They care about control. And... Uh, uh, and so we see, they say, we have to get this right. Let me read this. In February, ID 2020 launched the Good Health Pass uh, collaboration, an open and, and inclusive cross-sector initiative to create the blueprint for, uh, uh, for, for digital health, the blueprint for digital health pass systems that will help restore global travel and restart the global economy. Wow. Digital passports, folks. Again, I've always said this. It's not about a virus. It's not about a vaccine. It's about the, the, it's about the digital identification and control that's attached to that. So again, the vaccine itself is not, but what's coming behind it is what the vaccine is being, the purpose of the vaccine is to slip this in. Now you can see there, this health pass, 
So when they say we got to discover this health pass and we've got to, we, you know, it, our prime minister in Canada gets up and says, you know, we're trying to work on the idea of a vaccine passport. No, they, they're not working on the idea. The idea is already there. The concept is there. I wouldn't even doubt that the whole system is ready to go and they're just taking their time to launch it out. Just like the vaccines, folks. I said right from the beginning that God spoke to me and said the vaccines were ready to go uh, back in April of 2020 when they started talking about vaccines because this is how they're going to implement this digital ID and this global pass for international travel. Right now, you can travel with a PCR test or you can travel if you're vaccinated. It's coming, folks, that you won't be able to travel without a vaccine passport. It won't matter if you have been vaccinated. It won't matter if you have a PCR test. They don't want, they're not going to allow you to travel. Part of the 2030 agenda is to stop un, uh, a non-essential travel in the world. Now, let me read on a couple more points. Identity is vital for political, economic, uh, I think I said that, did I? Let's see here. It is. It's just, it's just coming back up. Okay, let me read the next thing here. Oh, that's all they're giving me now. Uh, I, that's all they're giving. But regardless, uh, you can see that this idea of identification and digital, for some reason, it's freezing up on me. Maybe they're, maybe they're freezing me out. I, 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 don't think, I don't think they're paying that close attention to us. But regardless, we see here that it's coming up. Identity is vital for political, economic, and social, social opportunity. Listen to me. Identity is, is vital for political, economic, and social opportunity. ID 2020. If you don't have a vaccine passport in Ontario, you're not able to go to restaurants. You're not able to go to sporting events. You're not able to go to a wedding. You're not able to have a wedding in a public setting. You're not able to even go to a funeral and, cele and celebrate the life of a loved one who has passed away. This is wicked. This is evil, folks. But what do we expect? All of this eventually is going to be controlled by the Antichrist who's going to be controlled by Satan himself. This is Luciferian by nature, folks. To stop people from going to a funeral home to celebrate and remember the life of a loved one who has passed is wicked. It's evil. To stop people from going to a wedding to, to celebrate their children's wedding because they made a choice not to get vaccinated because of health reasons or because of concerns or because of whatever reason they want, because they're free human beings and because they have a, the freedom of conscience in Canada is evil, it's wicked. And, it, and it's coming even more as we can see in Nigeria and Australia and other parts of the world. It is a scary thing for the people of this world when a minister of parliament in Australia says, if you're not vaccinated, you will be locked out of that country's economy. That's exactly what Revelation chapter 13 says, folks. Revelation chapter 13 says, No man can buy or sell lest they have the mark. So all of these pastors, and I'm going to say it again, pastors, you better stop this and you better stand for freedom and stand for the saints of God and, 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 and realize that this whole vaccination thing is bringing in this ID 2020 identification that's going to pick and choose and create a two-tier system. And guess who's not going to be a part of that? Anyone who refuses this vaccine. Any, and, it's going to, and even if you got vaccinated, if you don't take the passport, you're going to be locked out. And, uh, and it's crazy what they're trying to do. They're trying to divide the nation pit people against each other. And I, as a pastor, refuse to do that. I will not do that. Uh, uh, we stand for all human beings and all people of this world. And God gave mankind free will, and we support that. Now, can you imagine this, which was on? You can see what they're trying to do, folks, and promote. Can you imagine what this is on the Toronto Star? Remember, you, many of you saw this. Here's what it says. If an unvaccinated person catches catches it from someone who is vaccinated, boo-hoo, too bad. I have no empathy, empathy left for the willfully unvaccinated. Let them die. That's hate speech. Toronto Star should be charged for put printing this. This is hate speech. I honestly don't care if they die from COVID, not even a little bit. Unvaccinated patients do not deserve ICU beds. Incredible, isn't it? Which, which which I kind of chuckled and got angry at the same time when I read this. 
If an unvaccinated person catches it from someone who is vaccinated, think about the stupidity in the mind of that of these individuals. If an unvaccinated person catches COVID-19 from a vaccinated person, which right off the bat, common sense should clue in that vaccinated people carry COVID-19. We know that. Vaccinated people can still die from COVID-19. We know that. Vaccinated people can still transmit this, this virus. And they're saying it right here. So it so it's not, it, you know, it's, it's incredible what's happening to the world right now. To the world right now. Now, this identification uh, with ID2020, let me read this to you. And, and this is why they're dividing and getting people to hate each other and isolating the unvaccinated because they're trying to guilt people now and manipulate people into taking the vaccine. You have to take this vaccine. Why? And they want everybody, don't kid yourself, they're going to want every child and every senior and every middle-aged person to take it because that's how you launch Digital ID 2020 and these vaccine passports. Now, uh, everyone has to get it. And remember when they told you and Doug Ford, our premier, lied to you and our prime minister lied to you? If we get 60% of the people vaccinated fully, we'll open the economy back up. Everybody will go back to a normal life. We'll take the masks off and we'll, we'll free everybody and we'll go live our lives. Lie, lie, lie. 60 now became 70. 70 became 80. 80 becomes 90. Nine. They're pushing to get this done. Now, here it is. No government company agency can solve the challenge alone. Talk about digital identification. Setting the future course of digital ID and navigating the associated risks and challenges, uh, uh, challenges that require sustained collaboration and global partnership. So it requires all of the world to come together to get this digital identification done. And, uh, and that's what they're working on. Now, guess who's one of the big investors into global uh, digital ID 2020? Canada is under the leadership of our globalist prime minister, Justin Trudeau. This is why he has to lose this next election. If, but if this is the plan of God, folks, we can't stop it. If, if the Lord is going to tarry, we're going to get some breakthroughs. If the Lord is coming and this is leading to the rapture of the church, the launch of the tribulation period, and the end times, nobody can stop that. But Canada is recognized as the anchor donor of the Vaccine Alliance leading global efforts to advance gender equality, women's empowerment, reduce the burden of infection diseases. And it's, and it's a big supporter. Listen to this. Gavi... Gavi Alliance is all about vaccines. Gavi Alliance is a network for vaccines and for so-called to protect, prevent, to be preventative against viruses. Gavi is a big part of ID2020. Who's a big supporter of Gavi? The nation of Canada under the leadership of Justin Trudeau. Since uh, Canada has invested $1 billion through Gavi since 2002, but it's been under Trudeau that it has heightened in, uh, in 2018 through the G7 under his leadership. So we can see here, uh, so far we have given $462 million as a nation towards this Gavi Alliance, which is a part of Digital ID 2020. Now you know why Canada is trying to lead the way in vaccine passports and lockdowns and all of this stuff, folks. And again, this is starting to sound more and more like the book of Revelation, okay? Uh, Revelation chapter 13, and it, it's, it's coming, folks. I believe it's coming. You know where I stand on all of this. Now, let me just give you a few more thoughts tonight. Uh, again, I wanted to answer that question. If you took the vaccine, you haven't taken the mark of the beast because it doesn't happen until the tribulation starts until the Antichrist steps on the scene. But folks, please use wisdom concerning all this. Please pray about this. Make your own decisions on this. My family and I are standing against this because we believe in freedom, because we believe in our charter of rights, and because we want, we want to make sure whatever we do, it is good for our family and for the health of our family and for all of that. But I can't tell you what to do. You have to make that decision for yourself and you need to pray. Now, 
Here we go. COVID-19. I, the other, about a week ago, I woke up and the Lord spoke to me. And he said, COVID-19, Peter, is not about science. It is about compliance. Isn't that good? The Holy Spirit said, it's not about science. It's about compliance. That will eventually lead to some levels of defiance. So the Lord told me there's going to come uprisings more and more in the world and it's going to become harsher because there are going to be people pushing for their freedom and for their liberty. We're already seeing that and it's going to heighten even more. Uh, and so I, I, uh, we have to be praying for the world, folks, preaching the gospel, being watch our families, bring our families very close, protect our families. Pastors, protect your church family. You have been in... You have been charged by the Lord to protect his flock and to watch over them and love them and, uh, and to protect them from the wolves of this world. Uh, you've been charged with that. It's not a business. It's not a, it's not a career. It's not for us to gain fame or notoriety or to, or, or to have success. We have been charged and commissioned by the Holy Spirit, by the Lord Jesus Christ himself, to watch over the flock for we give an account for it. So let's bring everybody close. But the Lord said COVID-19 is not about science, it's about compliance. And that is so true, isn't it? Let me give you a couple of things. <laughs> right here, remember, if an un a vaccinated person gives an unvaccinated person COVID-19, boo-hoo, that means the vaccinated person still gets COVID-19. Why do they get the roam free? If a, if a vaccinated person still can carry the virus, why do they get to go into restaurants? If a vaccinated person can still carry the virus, why can they fly into the nation of Canada now uh, and have more rights than the citizens who are un unvaccinated? They can fly in, don't have to quarantine, and they still can carry the virus. Why does an un a vaccinated person get to go to a wedding when they can still carry the virus or go to a funeral or go to a sporting game when they can still carry the virus? You know why they get the freedom? Because they're in compliance. There's no science to this. Uh, for example, let me give you a few things. Ontario, Ontario has come from my good friend Bruce. He's, Bruce is very accurate on, on Facebook. I see his stuff all the time. Ontario, 200 plus new cases among the fully vaccinated in one day. Yes, were there higher cases amongst the unvaccinated? Well, maybe and maybe not, but let's just say it is. There's higher cases, but still 200 plus new cases amongst fully vaccinated, which means anywhere from 30 to 40% of all new cases right now in Ontario, across Canada, are from fully vaccinated people, two vaccines. Now here's, here's the caveat uh, that, the, that the government does. Here's the, little, here's the little twist and the little twist the media does. They say 200 new cases from fully vaccinated, the rest are from unvaccinated people, and, and listen to this, and people believe this. Uh, and from people that we don't know if they're vaccinated or not. What a lie. They know every person that's been vaccinated, folks. And somebody comes into the hospital, they ask them if they've been vaccinated. So they're twisting it. So that number is probably higher than 200, but let's just say it's 200. 30 to 40% of all new cases of COVID-19 are coming from fully vaccinated people. Why do they get a pass? when they can transmit it to the unvaccinated, or they can transmit it to other vaccinated, or they can transmit it to grandma, or they can transmit it in the classroom or in the workplace. I just, it's amazing how blind people have become. But it, again, the prince of this world blinds people uh, and they can't see even common sense. And so Israel confirms their wave. Here's what Israel says. Israel has confirmed that their wave is driven by fully vaccinated people. People, Israel has confirmed in the Jerusalem Post that it has been driven by fully vaccinated people. And 35% now of all current COVID-19 deaths are by fully vaccinated people. Okay, so here we are. They get, to, they get freedom and the unvaccinated don't. Just, you know why? Because they have bought into the, the vaccine passport. Because if you're vaccinated and you don't have a vac vaccine passport, you can't go to a restaurant. If you're vaccinated and you don't have a vaccine passport, you can't go on a plane. If you're vaccinated and you and don't have a vaccine passport, you can't go to a sporting event. But because they complied, 
they are now given some level of freedom. Boy, if that doesn't sound like communism and the, and the great reset that they're talking about and control, and if that doesn't sound like Revelation chapter 13's coming sooner than we think, then we need to really wake up. See, here's the lie, folks. Here's the lie. See this chart right here? This is a chart I pulled off the government site. And this chart here shows deaths by age. Deaths by age. So why are they trying to poke our children? Because they want to get this, this chip in. They want to get, it could be a chip, and it could be something else I'm going to say. Just whatever it is, this vaccine passport, this is digital identification. For example, zero to 19, we've had 16 deaths in two years from COVID-19, two COVID seasons, 16 deaths from zero to 19. They don't need a vaccine, folks. They're not going to die. Remember when they said, oh, we want to we want to keep grandma and grandpa safe and keep the children away. The children are safe. They can't die from it, but we don't want them given to granny and grandpa. There's a reason for that because grandma and grandpa are mostly the people dying from this. But now they want to vaccinate 12 and up and they're going to want to vaccinate children and up because they want to tag them with something. I'm going to share in a second. Uh, 20 to 29, 68 deaths. They don't need vaccinated, the 20 to 29 year olds, but they're forcing them to if they want to go for post-secondary education already. Uh, 30 to 39, 152 deaths. 40 to 49, 349 deaths. My age, 50 to 59, 1,000 deaths. Very minuscule and compared to all of the deaths. Let, about 3% of all deaths are in that age, in all of those age groups combined. Now, Remember when I prophesied a few years uh, uh, back in 2020, March of 2020, the Lord said to me, this was released on purpose. It's going, actually I said this in January 2020. This was released on purpose to our church. Released on purpose uh, to, to, to get the weak, to get the disabled, to get the weak, to get those who are already sick and, and the elderly to put fear on the world for the purpose of control. Well, this, this validates that prophetic word from the Holy Spirit. Now, 60 to 69, 2,600 deaths. 70 to 79, 5,400 deaths. And 80 plus 17,000 deaths. So from the age of 78 to the age of 85, though eight, that makes up about 82% of all COVID-19 deaths. But they want everybody vaccinated because of Digital ID 2020. Uh, again, if you've taken a vaccine, you have not taken the mark, but it, it's leading us to the platform for all of that to happen. So I want to encourage you, pay attention, dear family, pay attention. Let me give you a few more things here. Why are they forcing a vaccine on everybody? When we know that Reuters has said in the States, U.S. reviewing if Moderna shot tied to high heart inflammation. This is just in the Washington, this was in the Washington Post. We know the vaccines is causing people to die. We know the vaccine is making not just thousands now, millions of people around the world, uh, Veirs is reporting, are, are getting sick from this vaccine. Somebody I just read tonight from Australia that one of their loved ones just died by taking the Moderna second shot. And now here's the other thing here. Public Health Ontario issued right here. Public Health in Ontario issued a report the other day detailing how there have been 202 ER visits for myocarditis and pericarditis caused by vaccines. With 142 of those in Ontario alone requiring hospitalization. 32 of these were in 12 to 17 year olds. 75 in 18 to 24 year olds. And so you can see that why are they pushing this vaccine? Because of Digital ID 2020. Now they want somebody as young as my son vaccinated and that's not happening because in England, they're trying to suspend it because of how many young teenagers are getting heart inflammation. And doctors have said it's irreversible. Uh, in America, the same thing, they're fighting it. But folks, they're pushing it. Now, for all of those who got vaccinated who thought, I got the double shot. I'm safe now and I'm not going to die and I can't transmit it no more. Well, now you were told that if you take one shot, you won't get sick and you won't die and you won't transmit it. Then they lied and said, no, it's going to take two shots that you won't get sick, you won't die and you won't get transmitted. Now they're saying is, now now my little dog's right here. Watch out, Bozy. My little dog just came into the, the room here. I don't want him to hit the camera. 
Uh, now they're saying you take two shots, you can still get COVID-19, you can still transmit COVID-19, and people are still dying from, uh, even though they're fully vaccinated. Now they're saying, already for this, everybody, COVID-19 vaccine passport expires every six months. Think about that. Every six months. So it's not just one shot, as many of you know now. It's one. It's a third shot. So Israel has already started September 1st, said that if you have been vaccinated six months previously, your vaccine passport has expired. You no longer have freedom. You no longer can go to restaurants either. You're just like the unvaccinated. So you have to take your third shot. Well, now Israel has come out and said, prepare for your fourth shot. And we prophesied this over a year ago that this was going to happen. That once they inter implement this control, this digital ID 2020, these vaccine passports, in order like a driver's license, you're going to have to renew them on a regular basis to keep them up to date. That's the only way they can keep these things active and keep them going. So two doses, now three doses, now four doses of this stuff being shot in your body. So think about this. In one year, vaccinated people will have taken four shots of the COVID-19 vaccine. The flu vaccine, you only get one a year. This is going to be four shots in one year. It's already causing uh, adverse reactions and sicknesses and death in people's body. What would four shots be in somebody's body? Now, folks, it's all about keeping this thing going and renewing. So Canada, Canadians that took the shot, you're going to have to take another one soon. Once you get your passport and once you activate it, you're going to have to get it every six months because this is how they keep the control going. And did you now notice what they're saying? Now they're saying this. I know some preachers say you shouldn't teach on this. I have to teach on this. I have to get this going. Why? Because it's starting to look very close to the book of Revelation in so many ways. And we as preachers have a responsibility to tell people the truth and prepare them for eternity and prepare them for the coming of the Lord and prepare them for the tribulation and prepare people to miss the tribulation period and to tell people that the tribulation is coming. And this is starting to look like it even more and more every day. We have a responsibility, folks, to reveal Bible prophecy. And the problem with a lot of some, not a lot, but some of our pastors, they, they, they don't even know Bible prophecy. They don't even know the word of God. Some of them have never been to Bible school. Uh, and so this is happening before our very eyes. So passport expires every six months now. That's how it's going to happen in the nation of Canada. Folks, it's coming more and more. Now, here's what's happening. See this right here? This is called a QR code, okay? You see them everywhere. You see them at restaurants for uh, menus. You see them even on shampoo bottles. You see them everywhere. Now, what happens is the moment you register yourself with the Canadian government or with the Ontario government, you get a QR code attached to you. And it is permanently attached to you now, this QR code. The reason why, I remember years ago, people said they're going to use barcodes and people in this 80s, barcodes were going to be used. Well, they can't make enough combinations of barcodes for all the people of the world but this they can folks they can they can uh, see these big squares they can add other different symbols for different nations so that when they when this code is flashed up on an iphone and it goes to a central database they can sh know what nation you're in by using different squares all this all this can be attached to you now so when you register for a vaccine passport this is attached to you permanently now and uh, oh, it's incredible. Now, some think that the mark of the beast could be a microchip. It could. It, the Bible doesn't say what it is. It just says it receive a mark in your hand or your forehead. Now, original language does use refer to a stamp in your right hand or into your forehead. Uh, some say it could be a microchip. I'm not going to argue what it is. It, the Bible just says it's going to happen. And the, and the number of his name and his name is going to be attached to it and nobody can buy or sell or be a part of what? The economy and the global markets like they're trying to do in Australia. But this is attached to you. And do you know that they can make this thing so small now 
they, this is, I blew this up so you would see it, but they can make this thing so small, they can make this about two, I believe it's two millimeters square or three millimeters square, don't quote me on it, but so small, it's very small in your hand. And when you take an iPhone and that little square will pop up on the iPhone, it can magnify it and then it will launch you to a website or to a database. So what it does now is it, the, it launches the app and the app has your vaccination information on there and your name. And now what you gotta do when you go to a restaurant in Canada and around the world that has these, it, it'll show your vaccine and then you gotta show your driver's license. Soon, according to Digital ID, all of your information is going to be attached to this. So when it flashes up, a picture will show. It'll show a government document showing that's who you are, showing that you're fully vaccinated. It'll have all of your personal information on that at your fingertips. Now, some say is you know it, that that uh, is the app the mark of the beast. No, it's got to be on your body. That's what the scriptures are saying. Now. Here's the key in this though, and you know where this is going, and I had a young man in our church, Aaron, he's so smart, man. He's, we got some really awesome, smart people at, at Kingdom Worship Center. I'm sure many pastors will say that, but we do. He said, Pastor, I can see it. He said, you know, they're going to, they're going to say that not everybody has a cell phone, so not everybody has access to the app. The seniors can't access apps and cell phones. Homeless people may not have a cell phone. Children don't have cell phone access. So what are they going to do in order to launch this digital ID? He said, they're going to put a mark on people because if you carry a card, you can lose it. But if it's on your body and on your person, it's easy. You can just flash it. All of your information comes up and bang, you're in or you're out of the global economy. Uh, this is this is not my words, folks. This is right there on Digital ID 2020. But common sense is at the back end of what I just said is that not everybody has an iPhone. Not everybody has access to an app. Not everybody can carry a card. Some folks will lose the card and you need it for every restaurant, every venue. If you're going to a wedding, a banquet center, you're going to have to show it. If you're going to a football stadium, you have to show it. If you're going to a, if you're going to a, uh, a funeral, you're going to have to show it. Everywhere, you're going to have to show this. Somebody says, well, you know, pastor, you don't, don't be a conspiracy theorist. No, I'm not. It's the Bible. The Bible is not a conspiracy. And what's happening is not a conspiracy. It's really happening before our eyes. Well, it's like the Costco card and your driver's license. But how many of you have ever had to show your Costco card to go to a restaurant? You get a Costco card just to go to Costco. You can pick and choose to go to Costco. But this is about an identification that you'll have to present everywhere you go. You'll have to show it at Walmart. You'll have to show it at Costco. You'll have to show it at the gas station. You'll have to show it absolutely everywhere. When a minister of parliament says you should be locked out of the Australian economy and market if you don't take this vaccine, how are they going to know that you, that you didn't? They're going to know because of what they're tagging to you. Sorry, that's not it. What they're tagging to you, which is this right here, which is this right here. And this can be easily stamped on your body, very, very tiny, or somewhere up on your forehead, very tiny. I'm not saying this is absolutely it, but it's, it, it, definitely, it definitely meets the criteria for it, it to be it. So that's where we're at, folks. We're getting closer and closer to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For the believer, it's glorious. For the unbeliever, it's dangerous. For the believer, it's celebration. For the unbeliever, it's chaos. Oh, I thank God that I serve Jesus Christ and he's my Lord and Savior. Can you put up on the screen there? If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, that thank God uh, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior for he will redeem me from all of this and give us all eternal life through his awesome and mighty name. Please share this, get this out. This is pertinent, very important information. It's moving, moving very, very quickly, folks. We don't have much time. I do want to say this. I told you last year, stock up on some food in your home. Please make sure you have some extra food in your home. If you're not taking this vaccine, make sure you get some extra food in your home, some extra water supplies. Uh, just be wise, folks, please. Don't trust these people when they say, well, we're only going to lock you out of 
Uh, we're only going to lock you out of restaurants and we're only going to lock you out of these social gatherings. Don't, don't trust them. They've lied to us. Our, our premier has lied to us multiple times. We pray for his soul to be saved and come to Christ. But they have lied to us in all of this. And they have not told us the truth. So why would we trust anyone who has lied to us over and over in this? Uh, their plan, folks, is to potentially lock, uh, eventually lock everybody out. And uh, just, just be wise, folks. Of course, I believe the rapture is coming soon. And uh, the, eventually the mark of the beast will completely be launched during the tribulation period. But that doesn't mean it, it, that, that things can't start rolling out before the tribulation like we're seeing right now, folks. That doesn't mean things don't get harder and harder and harder before the rapture of the church, folks. So let's be wise as serpents. Let's be harmless as doves. And let us be so close to Jesus and so in tune with his word and so in love with the Lord with, and give all of our lives to him and let us love one another, support one another and, and help each other in this hour. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the teaching tonight. Please share it. I can't ex stress that enough. Let's get this out to as many people as we possibly can. If you're watching me tonight, I want to encourage you to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are living in the last days. The Bible has prophesied this time. You know, the Bible prophesied about these plagues. The Bible prophesied about the global government. The Bible has prophesied about an, a, a global leader that is coming that the, the current Pope has said we need it. And other leaders in the world has said we need this global leader. We don't need him. We only need one leader, is Jesus Christ. And the Lord made the nations. But in order for God to fulfill his end time plan and to deal with this wickedness of man on the earth, he, he is allowing these things to happen. But the Bible prophesied all of this. The Bible has prophesied this global economy, this identification that's coming. And if the Bible prophesied all of that and it's happening, then the word of God is true. That there's no way to heaven and eternal life but by going through Jesus Christ. For the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That is John 3, 16. Romans chapter 10 tells us that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I will be saved. Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes unto the Father yet by me. Listen, folks, heaven is real. Hell is real. Everything that's happening on the earth has been prophesied. And that means if, if, it, if all of these things are true, then the only way to escape it is through Jesus Christ. And the only thing that's stopping you from escaping it is your sin, the sin that you've committed. Believers in Jesus Christ are not perfect. They're forgiven. And if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ and never asked God to forgive you of your sin, then you're not forgiven of your sin. You're not released of your sin. And sin will keep you from heaven and from the eternal presence of God. Please, I plead with you tonight with all of my heart, give your life to Jesus Christ. Believe on him. Confess him as Lord of your life and ask him to forgive you of your sin. Do it now. Don't do it next week. Don't think you've got next week, next year. Things are moving too quickly in the earth. Do it now. Say this with me tonight, even now. Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I have sinned against you. And I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose from the dead. I confess you as Lord. Thank you for saving me, and thank you for giving me eternal life. Pray that, believe that, and join us. Join us in heaven someday. Praise God, and may God keep you in all of your ways. I love you, dear friend, family. Remember, we are strong in the Lord, and the power of his might, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We're wise, we are understanding, we see what's going on and we're paying attention and we're standing strong together. I love you. I pray God blesses you. God's favor be upon you. May you prosper no matter what's going on. May you prosper and be in good health in everything. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for your support, family. If you'd like to support us, the information's up on the screen or somewhere in, the, in those messages if I didn't tag it. But thank you for your support. You help us get things like this out. Help us print these off. Get them out to people. Hire the people. Uh, hire, have staff at the church. All of that stuff. Volunteers and provide that to the people. You, you help us do all, everything we do. Uh, may God richly bless you for allowing us to get this, helping us get this information out and seeing people come to Christ. Share it, folks. Share it. Have, have those, what do they call them? Those, uh, those parties, those watch parties. Do that also for this. This is important information. I love you so much. And I believe in God for nothing but greatness for you and your family. Have a great night. I'll see you Thursday night at 7 p.m. at Kingdom Worship Center. God bless you, everybody.